Hey crafters, we are back and we are working on our box and I want to show you where we're at so far. I Mod Podged the entire box with the tissue paper with the music notes on it. I did the sides but not the centers because we're going to cover that so I basically just made sure that it wrapped around all the edges. And in some places I did heavier and some places lighter and that's kind of on purpose and kind of not on purpose but it, it'll turn out looking really good. Um, I think we should go ahead and cover the inside. I want to show you that once I did the Mod Podge, I'm having this lifting issue, but I have a plan for it. Don't stress over that. Um, you'll actually probably like the plan when we get done with it, so here we go. Okay, so we're going to work on the interior of the box, and I have this paper that my mother gave me a long time ago. She bought it and used like one piece of this wood grain metallic finished paper. Um, it's from Martha Stewart, and it's gold and mint, and I think this would be so pretty line in the box as if it were wood grain on the inside. Um, so that's what I'm going to put in there. And I'm going to actually use my craft glue for this to save Mod Podge because I used a lot of Mod Podge and I'm trying to, you know, let's don't waste it all. And in here it's not going to matter as much. So, see me having to shake it down? It's because I took it out of my glass bottle because I was using it. And what I'm going to do is just squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. And it probably seems like I'm using a lot of glue and a lot of Mod Podge and stuff, but for this box, it's a good way to kind of reinforce it. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is paint, just smear this as good as I can around. And you'll want to make sure you get the edges good. So if you need more glue, get more glue. And with this piece of paper, I'm going to go ahead and run it up the back of the inside too. I didn't cut a separate strip for that. I'm going to run it up there to kind of kill two birds with one stone. So I'm putting glue in that area too. And I'm going to paint it around. Okay, now we get to place it inside. I cut it about a quarter of an inch smaller. Really maybe a little bit less than that. Um, than the width of the inside of the box just to give me some wiggle room because when you have those Mod Podge pieces and your binding hinges around the side sometimes that can cause some bulk and this is just laying in here really easy take your time getting your cut right you know take your time measuring it lay it in there do a dry fit do a couple of dry fits just make sure you get it right because if you do that, then this part goes super quick and easy. I love how that wood grain looks in there. That's pretty neat. Okay, this is too tall, so I'm going to trim it off, but not just yet. I'm just going to let it sit there for a few minutes and let that glue kind of set up for a second before we do that. Now I want to do, get these sides ready, and I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. Okay, so you remember how we did the sides of the box to get our curve. We used our glass. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to take our strip that this strip is cut just slightly under two and a half inches wide just because of that bulk we talked about. So I just trimmed it just slightly under and we're just going to take our glass, put it at this edge, line it up, trace it, and trim that out. And I'll show you what you get when you do it. I went ahead and did these two. So you end up with this. So now we have those side panels to put inside the box already curved for us. All right, if I turn this on its side, can you see it better? Possibly. I'm gonna bend this back, because I'm gonna trim that off in a second. There we go, now you can see what I'm doing. And all this glue is just like another nail, you know, it's just like it just more, adhes it, more adhesive makes it sturdier and sturdier and sturdier. And it also dries clear, much like your Mod Podge, so it works very similar. Okay, now we'll just pop this piece in. Taking it and lining it up in the back first to get our curve good. Then 
I want to make sure the side is glued down well. Now what I want to do is I want to cut this piece away. Now that I know it's got on there well, so I'm going to just cut that off. Now, I have this lip here, and I'm okay with that because when I cover this entire piece, it's just going to look cleaner and neater when the box is closed because of that lip that's there. So, let's go ahead and cover this section so we can have the inside looking really, really nice. And I want to do it in the wood grain as well. Now, you may not can tell, but the box is still popping open, but that's okay because once I do this top and put some weight on it and then I do the piece I'm going to do down here, we'll be just fine. All right, so what I want to do is go ahead and cover these edges, and I want to show you what I've decided to do that with. Remember my burlap that I can't get enough of? <laughs> I went ahead and got a sheet of it, and I cut strips and did the same rounding on the corners um, of this one. So I have the first one rounded and then I'm going to use this and make that a template. Use one as a template. There we go. Alright, now this is going to lay on the side like so and I cut it a little, a little skinnier because I wanted to be able to see some of the music note around it and I did leave it a little long because I didn't know exactly where it would end up but it looks like I need to take almost half an inch. So I'm going to cut that real quick. Because I do want this just to go to the edge. I don't want it to hang over because I'm going to put it on the front as well. Um, I love this burlap. But I'm not going to put it on yet because i got to do some inking. Now this might seem a little strange, but I'm not going to use Distress Ink on this. And the reason is I want it to be much darker. So I'm going to use some Stays On Ink, the Timber Brown, which my pad is really getting dry. So it's not going to be extremely, extremely dark. But if you're concerned about the color, put it somewhere you know you're going to cover it up first. So I know I'm covering the top, so I'm going to start here. And see, my pad is so dry that I should be fine to use it. I just want to knock back some of the white color. I think that the, you know, the tissue paper was white and that's fine, but I think for what I'm going to be using, I need not so white. Look at the difference in that. Isn't that pretty? I love it like that. Now then, I'm going to go ahead and open it up and I'm going to ink these edges where this paper shows. Now I'm going to go ahead and ink these pieces that I'm using for the edges. But I'm just going to ink them around the edges. Just to give them some dimension. Okay, so we are ready to put them on. I'm excited. I'm ready to see what they look like. And with this, because it's laminated, I'm going to put the glue on to here first. I think it'll just be easier. Place it down. I'm going to line that edge up just right. Oh, I'm really loving this. It seems like as soon as I put burlap on something, I'm like, oh, this is, yeah, this is me. <laughs> wonder how long burlap will last is one of my favorites. Okay, and now we're just going to do it all the way around. Okay, and then the top piece. Just want to make sure we line it up on either side with our other pieces, you know, keep them in line. Isn't that pretty? I love it. I know you can probably see the glue lines through it through the picture right now, through the photo, I mean through the video right now, but they will go away as they dry. 
All right, so let's do a look all the way around. Look at the burlap. I love it. Where do you see my next piece of burlap? Look at this. This is for the top. Now, let me tell you what I did. This is the burlap that I love. Let me show you it. Now, I know I have a lot of new subscribers recently, and this is the burlap that I found at Walmart a while back. It's by Springs Creative, and it runs through your printer. It is awesome. I love it. It is... um. Three, you get three laminated burlap sheets for like less than three dollars and you can get it at walmart.com and I'll put the link below but I ran it through my computer I went into the computer let me tell you exactly how I did this I went into the computer and I found a free background of Chevron okay then in my I use pages on a Mac but you could have done this on Word I filled my screen with the Chevron then I put in a circle that had a white background because white won't print okay so that blocked out the Chevron underneath I did a border in red and put my initial in the middle and H actually stands for my last name so this is gonna go on top but we got to ink the edges first all right guys so I'm ready to put this on top I inked the edges to kind of bring it more in line with what we're doing. I just love it. Okay, so I'm going to glue this up on the back. Okay guys, so I just finished shopping my stash and I found some pretty cool stuff, I think. Um, I'm going to make a, basically a charm to hang on the side let me show you you know I told you that the box lit it's not lifting at all now but it was and um, to keep it kind of hanging down I have these that I got from close to my heart and they're called foundry pen clips see this and they have like a circle in them and what I'm gonna do because this is cardboard is I'm gonna sink this in to the cardboard in this in a central location I gotta find the center And I'm just basically sinking it between the layers of the cardboard. Just like that. Now, if you feel like you need to, you can go ahead in there and put a little glue on it. Or, you know, take it out now since you've got your hole ready and put a little glue. But I'm okay with that. Um, so I have a... Let me see if that's the center because that'll bother me. It's pretty close. Okay. So now I'm going to make a charm to hang off of this to put a little weight. All right, I found all of these goodies in my stash, and I don't know if I'm going to use them all, but I do like them, and I'll show you. I even found these guys, which were some Mod Podge melts, which I thought were kind of neat. This one has something on it. I've made those a while back, um, and I'm not sure. Not sure which ones I'm going to use, but here was my thought process. Okay, now what I'm going to do is cut some pieces of this. This is like a hemp cord, kind of. It's kind of like a coated hemp cord, and I'm going to cut them in different lengths. And now my plan is to kind of take a couple of charms on one end, like this one and this cross, and then I'm just going to tie, um, I'm going to tie this around the cross. I don't want this knot around the key. I want the key to kind of dangle by itself. So I'm going to tie a knot on the cross, which we can put this on in a minute. And if you want to put beads on it, you can. That'll be perfectly fine. So there's that. Then I'm just going to drop this on. So it just kind of hangs with it. And just leave it for a minute. Okay. Now I want to take another one. And I'm going to tie this on. <clears throat> this heart. You want to hear a funny story about this heart? I used to manage an apartment complex. And we were at the pool one day. And someone's little cheap like Dollar Tree bracelet had broken and it was all these hearts and they were everywhere I mean they they had just left it because it, it was um the pulley you know the stretchy kind and it had broken and so um I picked them up to throw them away because they were everywhere and then I was like you know I can use those hearts for something <laughs> and here we are there was a bunch of them I just kept them and put them in my stash this is where you can just play and have fun and whatever floats your boat, just do it. Whatever you like. Tie a knot there. I think I'm going to dangle one of these crosses. Another cross. 
Okay, so now I'm going to take these and I'm going to just basically tie them together in, in varying heights. But I want to see how tall I need it, so I'm going to bring the box back over. And this is what I want to be the bottom, is this heart. And so, it needs to be about this tall when it's completed. So I'm going to add this one. And I may not need nearly as many as I thought. Oops. This is where you just play around and decide which ones you like best. I kind of like just the metal hanging without any of the white in it, now that I look at it. I like the crosses and the heart and the key. So that's what we're going to do. So now I'm going to tie them together just to keep them in place. Okay. And then I'm going to suspend them here by tying them again. But I'm going to trim this off. This looks kind of messy. And get a fresh string and run up through the middle. It'll still look okay. I just don't like the way that one looked. Going to bring it up nice and snug. Tie it really tight. Couple of knots. And then I'm thinking hmm, that might be pretty there. I have more of those without a hole in them. Or do I just want to do a bow? For now, I'm going to leave it as a bow. Let me show you. See those little charms hanging? It's cute, huh? I'm just going to leave it as a bow for now. I may find something else to put in there. I'm not sure what yet. Okay. Okay, so I have one more thing I want to do. I have to show you this. You're going to love it. Do you remember when I got this from Saw for my design team package? I love this ribbon, and I think I found the perfect place for it. So if you're interested in this ribbon, Saw Crafters is where I got this from, and I'll leave a link below for her. What I'm going to do is turn this on its side. And I'm going to make this the book edge. This is going to be so pretty. So let's get that done. I'm going to glue it down with just regular glue, just a lot of it. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and glue this down and then trim it off so I know I have just enough and don't waste any. So I do not want to waste this trim. I knew when I got it I wanted to use it as a book binding. I just didn't know it was going to be this style. I was kind of thinking mini album, but this is much better for me anyway. Okay, let me trim this. Oh, it's so pretty, guys. Oh, my gosh. Now where it's just hanging over the edge, I'm just going to trim it off even. I have oh, it's so pretty look. Oh my goodness, I just love that. Okay, last finishing touch. We're going to flip this guy over. And I found these beads I want to use as feet. And it's just enough to lift it up and give it kind of a little fancy look. But it's not really a tall foot by any means. Okay, so I'm going to use E6000 for those. And I think I'm going to try to put them right even with where the corners are. The inset corners. And back here I'm just going to put them even with the ribbon. Just right on the inside about a half an inch in.
What's great about using beads for feet, couple things, they're round for one thing, so wherever they touch, they're gonna see it. Second thing is they have a hole in them, so when you put the E6000 in that, E6000 soaks up into that hole for extra stability. So that's another good thing about using beads. The other thing, you can get a bunch of them cheap. <laughs> Now this is going to have to sit here and dry, and that's okay because this is the last thing I'm doing. I'm not going to go overboard. I'm not one to do that. So that's it. We're going to let these sit here and dry, and then you will get to see it in pictures when it is completely done and in its new home. So I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Just taking something, taking nothing and turning it into something. So there you go, guys. Um, I will see you guys on Monday for another Monday with May May. Talk to you soon. Bye.